Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 16 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to record electric guitar using the direct instrument inputs on your audio interface. And I'll also demonstrate the basics of how to use Amp Designer, which is an Amp Sim or Amp Simulator plugin in Logic Pro. We'll cover bass in the next video and we'll talk about bass Amp Designer in the next video as well. So first let's talk about the setup. I've seen a lot of people get this wrong, which has resulted in really bad guitar tones because the guitar is connected to the interface improperly and the guitar has been gain staged incorrectly. Now by DI, I mean direct input or direct injection as it's more correctly called. This means that you're plugging your guitar or bass directly into your audio interface using a quarter inch TS cable and connector. On my Apogee Symphony desktop, you'll see that I have a dedicated instrument level input on the front. But for some interfaces, this is shared with the microphone inputs. For example, here on the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2, you have to plug it directly into the dual quarter inch XLR input on the front and then press the instrument button to change the input to receive a high impedance or high Z instrument level signal. If you don't do this, you'll end up with a signal that is not recorded at the proper impedance and you'll never really be able to get a decent guitar tone when you add an amp sim in Logic. So just make sure that you're using an instrument level input on your interface anytime you're tracking DI guitar or bass. Now, if your interface doesn't have an instrument level input, alternatively, you can plug your guitar into a DI box or direct box and then plug the direct box into a mic level input on your audio interface. This will convert the signal from a high Z signal down to a low Z signal, which is what is typically used for microphone signals. So that's a workaround if you need it, but most modern audio interfaces, even really cheap ones, will have instrument level inputs these days. One last important thing to remember is that when working with instrument inputs, you shouldn't apply too much gain to the input signal as this may cause the signal to drive or distort and not in a nice way like you'd get from an overdrive pedal you put before your amp. So I recommend setting the gain on your interface to the lowest level and then add an amp sim and try out the tone. And if you want a little more drive, presence, or saturation, try pulling up the instrument level gain just a little bit, just a touch, but not too far. One thing I like to do is track my rhythm guitar parts with the gain all the way down. And then if I do a lead, I might pull the gain up just a touch, but just to add a bit more bite to the signal. But technically speaking, this is not necessary because you can just pull up the gain very easily in Logic later or add an overdrive or distortion pedal before your amp sim if you want a little more drive on the input signal. So for this video, I'm keeping my instrument level gain all the way down. Okay, so that's it for the setup. Before we jump into Logic, I just wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. Do you wanna take your music to the next level? Are you a musician looking for a collaborative platform to share your work and receive feedback from your peers or bandmates? Look no further than Boombox.io. Boombox allows musicians to upload their tracks and leave time-stamped feedback for each other. This makes it super easy to collaborate on music remotely from the comfort of your own home studio. Head over to Boombox.io and sign up today and get 10 gigabytes of free storage. Your music will thank you. Okay, so I've got the guitar plugged in and set up. Let's set this up in Logic. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new track. Now there's two options here. You could create just a normal audio track or you can create a guitar track. The only difference between these, because they're both audio tracks, the only difference between them is that this one automatically loads up Amp Designer on it. But I wanna show you the long way because I find this a bit more customizable and you don't have to just dig through presets in the library. So I'm gonna choose an audio track. My guitar, at least my instrument input, is input two. So I'm gonna change that to input two. I will not load a default patch and I will not open the library. And I'm just gonna create one track for now. I'll pull this up to the top and I'll just call this guitar L because I'm going to double track my guitar part. So I'll have one that's slightly to the left, one that's slightly to the right, similar to how I tracked the acoustic guitar. Okay, so next I need to make sure that I'm getting signal from my guitar and I also need to tune up the guitar. So to do that, I'm just gonna simply input monitor the audio track and play a bit on my guitar.
Okay, so I'm getting signal, but my guitar is like way out of tune. So I'm going to click here to bring up the tuner. This is an integrated tuner that's in Logic. And if you don't see it right here in the control bar, you can simply right click or control click here, go to customize control bar and display. And then under modes and functions, make sure that the tuner is shown. So I'll go ahead and just pull up the tuner again. And I'm going to tune up my guitar. I'm just using standard tuning for this since the acoustic was in standard tuning as well. Okay, I like to check my tuning on the 12th fret harmonics as well. I find I get a more accurate tuning if I tune the string open and then also check the 12th fret harmonic. Okay, so next I'm going to load up the Amp Designer Amp Sim plugin. The way you can do that is just select the guitar track or the audio track and then open up the inspector. Go to the audio effects insert slots here. This is where you can add effects plugins, things like compressors, EQs, reverbs, delays, etc. But you can also load up a plugin under amps and pedals called Amp Designer. So I'm going to go ahead and load this up. And then I'll just click on it to show the plugin if it doesn't automatically show the plugin. And by default, this gives me some sort of like Vox style British combo amp. So this is the amp here, and then the cab is over here. So it's got all of your typical guitar amp controls. And then on the cab, you can also adjust the position of the microphone in front of the speaker. Typically, if you place the mic more toward the center and closer to the speaker, you'll get more bass and more treble. As you pull it back, you'll get less bass, and as you pull it off axis or off center, you'll get less highs. So I'm just going to kind of put it about right there. And this is a R121 ribbon mic. This is sort of modeling a Royer 121, but there are several other microphone options in here. You got a U87 option, 414 from AKG, RE20, SM57, Sennheiser MD421. Sennheiser E609, and then back to the Royer 121. So let's see what this sounds like. So if I want a little more gain, I can add the gain here, maybe a little more bass, a bit more of the mids, maybe less treble. Maybe I want to turn the reverb off dial back the presence a bit, I can do that and I can fully customize the tone on this amp. Now, if I was looking for more of like a crunch or distorted tone, I could choose a different preset from up here. So there are different options here for clean, crunch, and distorted presets. Each of these presets will contain a separate amp and cab combo, but you can actually fully customize these down here. You can choose a full model, which will give you both the amp and the matched cab, or you can simply just swap out the amp or swap out the cab separately. So for example, if I wanted my sort of Vox style amp, but maybe I want an orange cab, I could choose the sunshine cab here. And now I've got something that sort of models an orange cab, but using a Vox style amp. And again, I could choose a full matched model here too. So maybe I want a modern British stack. I've got something that's more like a Marshall cab and amp. got a bit of a dirty pot there on my guitar or maybe I want something that's a bit heavier now personally I don't really find amp designers like high drive models very exciting in fact I find them 
kind of bad sounding, but Logic's amp designer does have some nice clean and crunch tones in it. So that's mainly what I'm gonna be using it for here. If you're looking for heavier tones for hard rock and metal, you may consider investing in some third party amp sims that are meant for those genres. STL Amp Hub is what I use when I'm tracking rock and metal stuff. They've got some really nice uh, hard rock and heavy uh, high drive amp tones in here. And this is just one option. There are a ton of different third party amp sim companies that produce plugins like this. And they load up the exact same way as Amp Designer. You just load it right on the audio effects insert on the audio track that you're working with. Okay, so enough of that. We're back to Amp Designer here. I'm just gonna go with sort of like a brighter, clean tone with a little bit of drive. And if you want even more drive, one thing you can do is you can add a guitar pedal, like a stomp box, before the amp. So if you wanna add a plugin before the first plugin in the signal chain, you just hover your mouse before that plugin. You'll see this little white line. Click there, go down to Amps and Pedals, and there's two different ways to do this. You can load up an entire pedal board, or you can just go down to stomp boxes, and you can choose individual stomp boxes. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I'm just gonna use the high drive pedal here just to give myself a bit of a boost. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that on so the light's on, so that means it's on. I'm gonna use the full setting, and I'll pull up the level a bit just to add a bit more drive to the tone. Maybe a little bit less than that. Okay, so I think I'm ready to track my guitar part here. And one little trick I like to do is I will set my cycle range where I want to start the recording. And every time I hit record, even if the playhead is over here, the playhead will jump over here to bar two and start recording there. So that's what I'm going to do here. It allows me to just keep tracking in the same spot over and over again without me having to move the playhead to the starting point. And with guitar, you can record take folders just like we did for vocals. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. Never tell me why Don't you ever tell me why Cause I don't want I don't want to know I've carried your heart When you needed me That's just how our love was meant to be I keep on tearing through these tragedies I took the brunt of your shame Okay, so there's my first electric guitar part. I'm going to pull that over to the left side. I think I'm also going to pull down the metronome level. It's a bit loud for my taste. I'm really hearing my groove more from the drums and the other instruments and less so from the metronome at this point. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate this track. You can also press Command D to duplicate the track. And what that'll do is duplicate all of the settings as well, including the input. So I'm gonna pan this one over to the right a bit, and I'll just rename this Guitar R for Guitar Right. And I'm gonna double track this as well. But what I'm gonna do is before I get to the chorus this time, I'm gonna stop and show you how you can comp together multiple guitar parts. I'm also gonna mute the vocals so I can pay a bit more attention to what's going on in the guitar. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and mute one of the guitar parts as well, one of the acoustic guitars, so I can pay better attention to what's going on in the left guitar so that I can match its timing a bit better. Okay, so right there you can see I made a mistake. So one of the cool things about 
using take folders and quick swipe comping is I can just set the playhead somewhere before I want it to jump in. And because I don't have the count in turned on, there's no pre-roll to where I start recording. So right where I set the playhead is where it's gonna start recording. So what I'm gonna do is try to jump in right here on this chord. So once again, I made a mistake there, but before I get there, I'm just gonna go ahead and comp this and use quick swipe comping to match up those two takes, close the take folder, and we'll jump in right here. Now, obviously, I'm not telling you to record your guitar parts this way. It's best to obviously practice them and try to get as many clean, full takes as possible. But as anyone will tell you in recording situations, sometimes players do better in the studio, sometimes players do worse in the studio. So this is a really helpful tool to be able to piece together guitar parts, especially if you have a longer song. For me, I'm just using a short one minute example, so it's not really as big of a deal here. So I'm gonna start here at bar 10 and I'm gonna jump in at bar 11. Okay, so I've got the guitar part recorded. I'm just gonna go ahead and use quick swipe comping here too to just bring this in just like so and make that sound like a smooth take. Now, one thing I wanted to mention here that someone had brought up in the comments is, what if you don't want to lose your take folder by using flatten and merge? You kind of have to flatten and merge because if you don't, you can't really edit the take folder like you can like a normal audio region. So there's a couple different ways you can do this, but there's something called track alternatives that are really helpful for this. If you just simply press Command C to copy this region or this take folder, go up to track and then select show track alternatives. You'll see this little extra option here show up and you can create a new track alternative and then paste in the take folder, then go back to alternative A and then click on the A button here, and then go to flatten and merge. And now I have one flatten and merged take. And if I ever wanna get that other take back, I can just go back to track alternative B. And now I have that take folder there available to me if I need to go in and grab a different part of one of those takes. So that's a really helpful feature I wanted to show you real quick. Let's go ahead and listen to this with vocals and acoustic guitar in. Let's see what this is sounding like. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. Don't ever tell me why. Don't you ever tell me why. Cause I don't want, I don't want to know. I've carried your heart when you need it. So I've just turned off snap mode, and then I'm just trimming the audio regions as I've shown you in previous videos, and using the shift control shortcut to add fades to the beginning and end of those regions, just to make sure there's no extra background noise. Okay, so I've got my electric guitar tracked. Next, I need to track bass, but I'm gonna save that for the next video. And then in the video after that, I'll talk about another function called loop record, which is really helpful for guitar recording, especially if you're trying to record guitar leads and solos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.